So what is on my 2023 race calendar and where can you find me running this year? <sighs> Cheers y'all, how's it going? I thought I would pop by with a quick overview of my calendar of races for 2023 in case you are so inspired to join me at any of the races. But I'm actually really excited because I think this is the most races I've had lined up or have been registered for this early in the year. A lot of times I kind of start the year with an idea of when throughout the year I'd like to pursue different races but haven't actually committed to anything. This is the first time I have like a structured calendar of races and sort of a structured training plan in place, um, which I'm excited about A, just to have that structure, but B, I think the races will transition really nicely into one another to do what we've been talking about, just kind of rebuilding that base, getting into really strong race shape before pursuing some goal marathons. Spoiler alert for some of those fall races coming up. But all that being said, before we dive into the specific races on the calendar, if this is your first time tuning into the channel, I hope you'll go ahead and click that subscribe button and I hope everyone will give this video a thumbs up that helps other folks find the videos as well but let's dive into the race calendar of what I have scheduled so far as well as where I have some flexibility to include some other races but obviously starting right off the bat if you have been watching for a while you know I am deep in training for the Rocky Raccoon 100 miler as much as I emphasized last year that I was moving away from ultra marathons and trail races to focus on road marathons the temptation of wanting that 100 miler finish, that 100 mile belt buckle, just convinced me to go ahead and sign up for another one early in the year so at least we can tackle it, get it out of the way before we do start to transition back into those road races. But February 4th and 5th, down in right outside of Houston, Texas, that'll be the Rocky Raccoon 100 miler trail race. Very, very excited for that race. Very nervous. I have plenty of training updates if you want more information on how that's going. But basically the plan from now until that race is just continue to grind through as many miles as I can, work on some of those sort of core fundamentals when you're starting to build a, a solid training routine, strength, flexibility, et cetera, getting in those good habits that will help me transition into more successful training periods, hopefully uh, moving past that race into the other races coming later this year. So that is in February. After the Rocky Raccoon 100 miler, we're transitioning back to road racing. Uh, I mean it this time, I swear, especially if my wife is watching, I promise we're moving away from the trail ultras and back to the road races. Uh, that being said, Probably gonna take a week or so off after Rocky Raccoon, depending on how torn up and beat up my legs are after that race. Um, but we'll quickly get back into training for just some sort of light, less stressful, less serious, I don't wanna call them fun runs, but more like social, exciting runs. And I will be going to run just for fun, not with any kind of specific goal or pressure uh, behind the training. But the first one is gonna be coming up on April, April 1st. I've talked about this in previous videos as well. One of my favorite races that I am really excited to return to, and that is gonna be the Hot Chocolate 15K in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. A race I've done in the past, one that I am extremely excited to run again. It's one of my favorite events just because, again, it's just exciting. It's a large scale race. There's runners of all abilities, all lifestyles coming to enjoy it. It's a huge group of people that get together to enjoy the race, but then maybe even more importantly, enjoy the celebration afterwards. And that is obviously my favorite part of the hot chocolate race series is all of the goodies that you get at the end. If you are in the Philadelphia area or would love to travel in for the race, you can use the code BRP run hat. Uh, when you register, you'll get a free running hat with your registration for that race as well. Uh, but that's going to be the first road race of the year. That one again is on April 1st. So it'll be a nice transition again, 15 K a little over nine miles transition from the 100 miler training, just maintain sort of the base training into that race, get some speed into my legs. It's a pretty flat course. Um, there's also a 5K, 10K available. I have some friends and family who are hopefully gonna come participate in some of those shorter distances. So just really excited to put a solid group of friends together to take part in that race. April 1st, we transition from April 1st 
Ideally, if everything has gone according to plan, legs will be feeling good, legs will be getting back in the rhythm of significant road training. We will then transition uh, not too much more in distance. The distance is gonna be about the same, but heading into early May, May 7th is going to be another Philadelphia race. That is gonna be the Broad Street 10 miler. Uh, another family favorite, uh, another personal favorite of mine, but with significant importance to my family. My mom actually started running this race with the American and Cancer Society uh, after she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my uh, mother is a two times breast cancer survivor. She's been running with the American Cancer Society for years. Uh, there was one year where she had just gotten her second diagnosis where I actually was uh, honored enough to run in her place, wear her bib to take on that race. But my, uh, my mom, myself, other members of my family and friends have often participated as part of her charity team to run that race. And if you're not familiar with the race at all, it's an incredible race. I think it might be the largest in terms of scale, in terms of number of people, 10 mile races in the country. It's massive, the sheer number of folks that take on this race. Um, but also, it is a lot of fun because it's just a 10 mile straight shot down Broad Street. It's beautiful scenery. It's also net downhill. You're virtually running downhill for the entire race. So it also lends itself to a pretty speedy race, which is a lot of fun. Um, but I am especially excited for this year's race because although it's not 100% confirmed, there's still some final details to iron out. Um, but I think my mom and I will be coordinating our own charity team the I Run On Beer team, which will be a faction of the overall American Cancer Society team for the race, but it'll be our own sort of team within that organization. So we'll have plenty of folks registering for that. I hope to have more information as we coordinate it, uh, but anybody who raises the minimum fundraising requirement for our team would receive a free bib for the race, uh, and it should be a lot of fun. Hoping to get some custom gear like singlets, maybe sweatshirts, t-shirts, what have you. Have to go over some stuff, but just get some custom items I run on beer, Broad Street, American Cancer Society gear uh, for our team to tackle the race. But really, really excited to hear more of those details come together or see more of those details come together. And I think we're gonna put together a really awesome team for that event. So that, again, not too much of a distance increase, just a 10 miler, but should lend itself to a little bit speedier of a race. Again, getting some more speed in my legs, getting used to some of that speed work, those faster pace races. Uh, and really these two spring races are built around, or I'm gonna be focused on just rebuilding a strong road running base to start incorporating speed work to transition into a much more serious, much more structured marathon training block over the summer. As we transition into the fall, gotta lean down for my prop. I realized when I got into this race, I announced it on Instagram, but never shared anything on YouTube. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you may not be aware, but this was the first year I decided to start throwing my name into the lotteries of some of the world marathon majors. For those of you who aren't aware of the world marathon majors, uh, I think there's six of them. So uh, three in the US, it's New York, Boston, and Chicago. Uh, and then you have London, Berlin, and Tokyo internationally. Uh, so those six races make up the World Marathon Majors. Anyone who completes all six gets an official World Marathon Majors Finishers Medal. That is really cool. It's got like a little medallion on it or a, a little token on it for each of the cities that make up those six Marathon Majors. Um, ever since I heard about it was something that was sort of a lofty goal that I knew I wanted to com uh, complete. No real timetable in terms of when I plan to complete it, but just knowing that over my career as a marathon runner, I would certainly love to be able to say that I completed the World Marathon Majors. Uh, they all come with varying levels of difficulty in terms of getting in. The majority of these races are all of these races. You have to either enter a lottery. Some of them have charity options or other options, but the most popular is the lottery. Uh, and so I figured I'd just start entering because they usually have a pretty slim chance of getting accepted. And so figured why not just start picking one or two races each year to put my name in for, hoping that I get picked, but of course not expecting to actually run any of them for at least the next several years. To my surprise, this being the first year that I decided to enter any of the lotteries and only deciding to throw my name in for one of the lotteries, uh, my entry was accepted. And so I am very excited to announce, hold for suspense while I unravel the prop, but I 
will be headed to Berlin, to Germany in September. Uh, and I, A, am just so excited beyond shocked. That's for sure. It certainly wasn't in mine or my wife's plans to plan a trip to Germany in September. Um, but when destiny calls, you answer. Uh, and so I was so thrilled to get the email. It was actually a little bit of a funny story because uh, it originally went to my spam. I couldn't find the email. The th there was something online that indicated on my account that I hadn't been accepted. So I kind of accepted the fact ah, I didn't get in, wasn't really expecting to, went on with my day. Uh, and it wasn't until much later in the evening of the results day that I found the email, tracked down the email in my spam and realized I had been accepted. So super, super thrilled for this race. Uh, probably the one that I am most looking forward to if you are unfamiliar with Berlin. So that's going to be on September 24th in Berlin. Um, it is, uh, I think there's about 45,000 folks, 45,000 runners who take on the marathon every year. Uh, it is also one of, if not the fastest course of all of the marathon majors. It's where Kipchoge broke the world record for the marathon time. So very, very popular course to PR on, which is why the hope is that these spring races will transition into solid blocks of marathon training through the summer so I can put together a strong PR effort in Berlin. Um, so that is the goal. That is kind of a goal for the year. Finish the 100 miler, that's all I'm looking at right now, but as soon as that is over, it's time to transition back to marathon planning and start focusing on goals for this race. The nice thing about that uh, that race also is it does happen earlier in the fall marathon season. It's in September. So if for whatever reason it doesn't go my way or I don't think I've had quite enough time to pull off the PR that I would like. Um, there are some later season marathons, a couple in particular I've had my eye on in the past that take place like late November, early December. So I could transition, go kind of run Berlin, get my dip my toes back into road marathon racing before transitioning into another block of training to prepare for a second marathon later in the season. So really, really excited, as I said, about how this calendar has started to uh, form itself or come together over over the last couple of months uh, and really, really excited to have this structured plan in front of me set for the rest of the year. Um, I am just, again, so shocked at some of the races that I've gotten into. Broad Street wasn't on my mind until a couple weeks ago when my mom brought up the idea of forming this team. Of course, Berlin was something I never thought that I would get into, at least on the first try. So just so, so, so excited for this year. After some tough months of training. I feel like I'm getting back on track. I feel like I have a plan. Uh, I feel like the motivation is starting to come back as well. Um, and just really, really excited to see what I can accomplish this year. So I hope you are excited as well. Again, if you're not already, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel so that you can follow along with all of this excitement. I'll obviously have detailed training updates throughout the year covering all of these races, as well as some other info about each one. Um, but just really, really excited to get started. So we are just a few weeks weeks away from the Rocky Raccoon 100 miler that kicks off the 2023 racing season for me. Um, and then as soon as that's over, there's not too much time to relax because it is time to start once again, focusing and committing on that road marathon. So very, very excited. Thank you as always for tuning in. I hope you'll give the video a thumbs up to help other folks find it as well. I hope you are as excited as I am about the races that you've have coming up. Please let me know down in the comments below what are your goals for this year. Um, this is, I talk about it a lot, but just one of my favorite times of year the end of the year, the end of one year, the beginning of the next to sort of reflect on everything that happened in the past before transitioning and moving into setting your sights forward and setting those new aspirations and goals for yourself. So obviously struggled towards the end of 2022, but I'm starting to rebuild, have some exciting goals for this year and just excited to see what's to come. So thank you as always for tuning in. And until next time, I'll see you around. Cheers.